I don't have no jokes today. So. No. God has blessed me with, you know, this time to preach, but he had me in lost. So during a couple of weeks, I was just thinking, what can I preach on about loss, 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 loss? Um, but he took me to the book of Luke. I ain't going to give y'all the scripture yet. But the title of this is, We Are Not, No, we have no sense of urgency. There it is. Yeah. We have no sense of urgency. And that goes for believers and non-believers. No sense of urgency. When it comes down to the sin or us getting right with God as believers or non-believers, we just don't have that immediate action in our lives. And, 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 and sometimes we, I mean, I'm quite sure all of us has heard, uh, we living in our last days and, 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 and we go get to that part too. But, but we, don't get, we don't have that immediate action because we always feel it within our hearts, we have tomorrow. Um, I wrote down a couple of definitions of procrastination. That's the action of delaying or postponing something. So all, a lot of us procrastinate when it comes down to the sin or us getting right with God. We, we got that procrastination, we, I got to tomorrow, or we put it to the side. We don't have that immediate action to just to get it done. And what happens is we delay our blessings. A blessings of, of, of getting closer and closer to our Heavenly Father. The definition of sanctification is to be made holy or to set apart. So in this process, we delay that, that, that time of where we can get closer and closer to our Heavenly Father. Because, again, we don't have that sense of urgency. Um, I have learned parables by reading, you know, stuff in the Bible. So I'm going to give you all a parable. <laughs> Some of you, uh, what we call Bible scholars, y'all catch it. Some people may not, but I'll give y'all a parable. The house that I'm in, right, my house, has a lot of problems, okay? A lot of problems. And, and, and some of the problems in my house, boom, I can handle it, right? But some of the problems in my house, you know, for example, the house that I'm in right now, it had a water issue, the tub and the sink, slow to drain issue, right? Takes me forever to wash it because the water just, and, and so I, I get to it, but it was a problem. I get to it day after day after day. I get to it, I fix it. I try to put liquid drain on there, fix it myself, I fix it, I get it. Day after day, it causes issues with me and those who come to my house. It was an issue. It wasn't until I called the plumber, I had to humble myself, <laughs> called the plumber, and within a day or two, the situation was fixed. But since I procrastinated and waited and waited, I, de I delayed the, the, the great feeling of taking a shower without the water filling up. I delayed my blessing because I procrastinated and I tried to do it myself. But it wasn't until I called the plumber. And when he came in, the situation, because I took action. See, when you take action, things happen. So I called the plumber, situation done. But my house still got other problems. But that's just one issue closer to my house be, to be made whole. Okay? All right. 
But so, so we, 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 have, we just don't have that sense of urgency, you know, and it, it delays our, our sanctification process. And we can come with many, many excuses. Oh, God knows my heart. God knows this. The question is, are you taking action or are you, or are you just sitting there making excuses or trying to justify your situation? That's the question you've got to ask yourself. We all go through the sanctification process. God's going to reveal some things in our lives that needs to take action. Now, the question is, are you going to do it or are you going to sit there and make excuses of why you didn't do it? You know, we, 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 we so, how can I say this? We, we, we feel, always feel we have tomorrow. And, 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 and you know, and, and since we Bible scholars, I got a couple verses. Okay? Because Jesus is coming. We heard, we, 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 we hear about the last days, and there's some scriptures on the last days. Okay? I'm not going to read the whole parable or the whole scripture, but in Mark 13, uh, in Mark 13 it talks about the signs of the end of the ages. And you can read it for yourself. Uh, when the uh, disciples asked uh, Jesus a question. Uh, where's some of the stuff? It says, watch out. I'm just going to start from five. Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear wars, rumors of wars, don't be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. And it goes on and on and on. And some of these things we are seeing today. Rumors of war, children against our kids against parents. All these things is happening today. So that's where you get the term we're living in the last days. Jesus is coming. But at the same time, we do not have a sense of urgency because we feel we always got to tomorrow. And whether you're a believer or not, in back of our mind, we always feel we have tomorrow. So we put it to the side. In 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4, it says, in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4, it says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of, lovers of themselves, which we see, lovers of money, which we know, um, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, which we see, ungrateful, unholy, Without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. We see that nowadays. We are living in the last days. But again, we don't have that sense of urgency at all as believers and non-believers. And, and one of the books, it says, I think it's Luke, probably Luke 12, it says, uh, ye be ready, because you, you, know, you do not know the hour or the time that he may come. In the book of Te um, Thessalonians, it says, it's somewhere like, Jesus will come like a thief in the night. Again, he is coming. We don't know when he's coming, but again, I say it again, we just don't have that sense of urgency. Even though we don't know when it's coming, we always feel we have tomorrow. All righty then. Now we go get to the scripture. If I can find it. We're going to come from, and before I start, this scripture is based on the loss, Okay of Jesus coming to save the lost. But I really want us to focus on the attitude of the person that they're talking about. His attitude is what I want us to focus on, okay? But Luke 19, that's Luke 19, and we're going to start from the first verse. And you may stand if you have it. Luke, if you don't have it, please stand anyway. But Luke 19, um, starting with the first verse, and I'm reading from the NIV, it says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. You may be seated. <laughs> I know how many of y'all love exercising. 
Don't want y'all standing too long. <laughs> but here, you know, in, in my Bible it says uh, Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Uh, but here it is um, in this parable they go talk about this tax collector, right? But I want us to focus on, again, his attitude because I like his attitude uh, when it comes down to this parable. Uh, because Jesus did and is, come, he did come to save and seek out the lost. Uh, and that's what this parable pretty much is about. But again, I want us to focus on his attitude or the way he is acting. It says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. Now, as a chief tax collector, I'm thinking, man, that he, he must was, uh, um, had a nice, huge area. He probably had people working under him, but he's a chief tax collector, okay? And he's rich. Guy got money, right? He got, he got big money. So he was a chief um, tax collector, and I, and I looked up, well, we go get to that part, but he was a chief tax collector, very, very rich, okay? He wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see who Jesus was. His heart. Now, here it is, a rich guy, a chief tax collector, plenty of money. He wanted to see who Jesus was. See, at that time of his life, his heart was already prepared to receive whatever Jesus had for him. See, because when you want him, you desire him, you give that open door for him to come in. So, so a lot of us came to, to God or Jesus, some of us, oh, I'm going to do it because my mom, or, but it's a difference when you want to. I mean, we hear, and I'm thinking to myself, uh, he, he, even though Jesus on his way to Jericho, he had to hear great things about him. Uh, he raised Lazarus and, and all these great miracles that Jesus had done. A lot of us non-believers, even some believers, we hear plenty of testimonies. How he healed the sister over there or how he raised up the brother there from, from being nothing to something. We hear all these great testimonies, but yet we still, some of us, don't desire that want for ourselves. He wanted Jesus for himself. I wanted to see him. And that was a great thing for him because that opened his heart up to receive what Jesus had for him. You see, this, that's why I want us to focus on his attitude. See that desire? See that, that want? See that he, he's not, he, he, he wants to see Jesus. His heart is prepared to receive what Jesus has for him. Uh, he said he wanted to see Jesus, but being a short man, I can relate to that. He could not, <laughs> he could not because of the crowd. Jesus always had a crowd with him. Now here it is, this short guy, you know, rich short guy wants to see Jesus. He wants it bad for himself. He wants to see who he is because he heard so many great things about him. And he wanted for himself. So he ran ahead to climb a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Again, we always hear Jesus coming back. We always hear he's coming. We always hear all these things, but are we really... Listen to what this guy did. He's rich. Keep that in mind. He's rich and he climbed a tree. He humbled himself. Humility. Just to see and to receive Jesus. These rich folks, now you, I don't care. You don't see rich folks climbing trees. <laughs> That's beneath them. I mean, even nowadays you don't see rich folks climbing trees. Rich folks always got to be first. They always first class with, the, with their peers, or if you see them at the games, they got their own little booth where they, them and their friends, or they way down on, on front rows, and the, they always separate. They never, you know, we first, I'm rich, I have money. Yeah. People drive for them, they just, this guy was rich, and he climbed a tree. <laughs> see where his heart was at? I want to see Jesus. He humbled himself. He wanted it that bad. It was a sense of urgency that he had because he wanted to get right. And he heard so many great things about Jesus. Humble, want, he's opened up. And the great thing about when you're open to Jesus, he sees that. Believe it or not, he sees that you're open to receive. He sees that you have this sense of urgency for him to come into your life. He sees those things because you have to think, when you read the next line, it says, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, 
Zacchaeus, come down immediately. The old, the, the, the King James, for the King James people, it says, make haste. I want, the, I want the brothers to know that I read almost every Bible before I, <laughs> it says, make haste. <laughs> but he said, come down immediately, I must stay um, at your house today. Look at the response that he received when he, when he wanted to see Jesus. He wanted, uh, he, he wanted to sin for himself. His heart was prepared for that. And like I said, sometimes when it comes down to the sins of our lives and us getting right with, with, with God, we don't have that sense of urgency. We don't have that sense of humility. We don't do what it takes to get to see Jesus. He climbed the tree. Some of us won't even come to church. Some of us won't even open the Bible. Some of us won't even sit and pray because we always feel we have tomorrow. We always feel there's another day. And, and, and all we're doing is de ne delaying, and, I'm, and, and you know, sanctification is a process. We don't, I understand that. But the things that are brought to your attention that you know about, those are things you need to take action of. And, oh, we all have it. We all have it. I don't care who you are. We all had that, that thing that Jesus said, hey, you need to deal with this. But yet we, he knows my heart, I'm a, and we put it to the side. And we're delaying that, that, that freedom, that, that sanctification process of being made holy because we don't have that sense of urgency like Zacchaeus did. He climbed the tree. He wanted to see Jesus. Even though a huge crowd was around him, he, he did what he had to do to see Jesus. And Jesus knew that, and that's why Jesus called him out. And he didn't make, he didn't make a request. This was almost like a demand kind of sort of. He was like... Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house. See, when you, when you open yourself up with Jesus, he'll come in. Yeah. And, and, and like I said, he sees those things. And, and, and that's as believers and non-believers. He sees those things. Don't always think you have till tomorrow. Do it now. So the process can be uh, start now. You can get closer and closer to Jesus. I like his attitude, though. So he came down and, and at once and welcomed him gladly. See, when, you, when, you, when you're happy, when you're glad, I, I forget what the King James said, um, joyfully. Yes, I read all scriptures. <laughs> joyfully. Uh, and so gladly he welcomed Jesus in. Now, this is where we get jacked up at. <laughs> all the people saw this and began to murder, uh, mutter. Uh, he has gone to, to be uh, the guest at a center. Now, he was a chief tax collector. The people back then looked at them as kind of like traitors and outcasts because there were, there were Jews who, 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 who took a job for the Romans to, 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 to take uh, taxes, you know? And, and, and this guy, he must have been kind of dirt dirty because... He was, he was probably pocketing some of that stuff for himself, probably, because he was rich. I'm going I'm to take, yeah, this is your taxes, but throw a couple more extra up in there. He probably was pocketing that stuff, you know. So the people didn't like him at all, you know, because it's like, this guy here, this dude, man, he ain't right. You know, and Jesus going to stay there? What? But see, it don't matter who you are when your heart is open to him. Jesus can make changes. But as people... As other believers, we have to allow Jesus to make those changes. We can't sit in our own judgment or our own little uh, whatever you want to call it, and I don't believe it. But Jesus can change anybody. And, and he changed this guy so much. You know, this guy wanted him so much into his heart. He was already ready. Uh, he, he, he welcomed Jesus gladly. That's that urgency. See, that's what I'm talking about. He was ready. Uh, and Jesus corrected him. And on the last part, he corrected the people. But it says, uh, but uh, Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord. The King James says, behold. <laughs> behold. But look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody or out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. This guy here was not even worried. He was not worried about the, the riches or, or money or the tangible things. 
what he has experienced and what I read some of the commentators, what he has experienced is what they call a spiritual richness. It's what he experienced because his heart was open to Jesus. He ain't worried about the, the money. Some of us are money hungry out there. We think money, we think money it goes solve all problems. But, but when you open, when you have a spiritual richness, richness about your life, you're not concerned about money. And here he is, he, he, he humbled himself so much that he, he's actually forgiving himself and want to forgive others by paying them back four times the amount and half of his possessions. Um, I was reading in some of the Old Testaments, like um, when, you, when you steal an animal, that's only like two times or whatever. This guy did four times, so he doubled that amount. This is like a severe type of punishment that he, that he, that he um, put upon himself because he wanted to be right with Jesus. Um, his heart was open. And he was not worried about money or, or, or none of that stuff because what he was experiencing was a spiritual richness in Jesus. And when you have that, you don't be concerned about nothing. And see, I experienced Jesus' spiritual richness because I know he loves me and he knows I love him. And when you when that, you know he's going to provide all your needs, no matter what the situation may be. You know he's going to take care of you. You just want to do what you can do to get close to him. And this guy is doing what he can do to get close to him because he knew Jesus was coming. And like all of us, we know Jesus is coming. But are we doing what we're doing to get close to him? Do we have that sense of urgency to get close to him, especially with the things that he's bringing to our attention that we know we're not supposed to be doing? We know we're not supposed to be doing. He told, he told me, and this applies to me, that's why I could talk about it. No sense of urgency. Putting stuff to the side, putting stuff to the back, get to it later. Even some of the sins or even some of the things I want to deal with, put it to the side, deal with it later procrastinating is what I'll be doing. And he brought that to my attention. So if anybody of y'all procrastinated, then this applies to you. If you haven't, good for you. So, <laughs> but, but, but he wants to do what it takes. He wanted to do what it takes to get close to Jesus. And, 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 God, want, and God want us to do the same thing. He wants us to do what it takes, especially when he brings us to our attention. Take action immediately when it's brought to your attention. Get closer and closer to God as you possibly can. Don't sit there and put it to the side because, again, the issue ain't going to go nowhere. And it's not saying that you're not going to make it to the promised land. But what I'm saying is do what you got to do so you can get closer to Jesus while you're here. And Because people are watching. These people is watching and they murmur because they didn't like it. We can't sit and judge. In a, we can't sit and be judgmental when people come to God. We just can't. Let God do what God's going to do. But God, God, what Jesus did right here is he, those people who was, oh, my God, he's going to the center house. Look how, they, look, how they, look how he checked them, though. He says, today salvation has come to this house because this man, too, is the son of Abraham. He, he's, he's, he's a Jew. He's one of my people, you know. For the son of man come to seek and to say what was lost. There's a lot of lost people out of here. So even a, it's a couple lost believers here and there, but he come to save all of us, even the lost. So again, we can't sit in that judgmental state when people come into, you know, to God, but even in our own lives, we got to have that sense of urgency. We put so much stuff to the backslide, bills, our health, everything to the backside, and it always going to have some type of negative effect because we don't deal with it immediately, especially when it's brought to our attention. So God, God wants us to know and wants you to know, and all believers and non-believers have that sense of urgency when it comes down to getting close to him, especially the things that he brought to your attention in your life. Don't sit there and hold on to it. Give it back to him. Do what you got to do to get closer to him. Bless God. Let us pray. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I just want to just thank you for what you're doing and, and who you are. We, we uh, just want to give you all praise, honor, and glory. I pray, Heavenly Father, that myself and others have just received this word from you, Heavenly Father. And we pray that we just take it, use it, and place it in our lives so we can be closer and closer to you. We thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right.